Well, I guess this could prove Professor Groban's theory, that you can put a snake to sleep with a high B-flat. But before any of you kids go and try it on your neighborhood rattlers, remember it may only work on snakes that like music. This is Carrie Madison inviting you to join me next week for some more curiosities of this weird and wacky world. Well, I guess that wraps it up, Ronnie. Hello. What? No, I was just leaving. I could be at Professor Hartman's laboratory in about two hours, give or take it. What do you mean the crew is going to be late? How late? An hour? What am I supposed to do with a mad scientist for an hour? <laughs> I'll pretend that you didn't say that. This is KKZ Los Angeles, the spot that's hot on your dial. Well, you can crunch it, watch it, chew it. Yes, sir. Mama Roland's jerky sticks. Try them soon, you hear? There ain't nothing in this world like Mama Roland's jerky sticks. Okay, it's 9.45 exactly. We got a high of 75 in downtown L.A., so for you breathers out there in the valley, it's looking pretty good. News and views coming at you on the hour with an extended report on those earth tremors up Frisco Way. They're on their way here. <laughs> if they can beat the freeway traffic, you heard it first here, where we make it happen. It's all coming at you. It's the first shock wave to hit the area, and this one reached 4.5 on the Richter scale. This is KKC Los Angeles News and Views. trying to prove, lady? You want to drive in a demolition derby? Go do it on a track. Funny. Very funny. I suppose you didn't notice. The rest of the world is having an earthquake. Look, you got two feet. One for the accelerator and one for the goddamn brake. Oh, God. This piece of equipment has seen me through two state championships, the defense of the interstate trophy, and cost me 40 bucks. Now look at it. What is it? What is it? It's a broken kendo sword. That's what it is. Looks like a bamboo stick. Well, since you're all right, I've got to go. Hey, don't let me detain you, lady. I mean, I'm fine. My truck is fine. My broken kendo stick is just fine. Everything's just fine, lady. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. Uh, here. What's this? Well, it, it's for everything. Lady, I don't need your charity. Charity? This isn't charity. And stop calling me lady. I hate to be called lady. It's insulting and patronizing. Believe me, I can think of better words. I bet you can. Because I'm a woman, isn't it? I mean, if I were a man... If you were a man, I'd break your goddamn head. Typical. Be violent. You want to see a violent male? Maybe you want to be treated like a child, taken across my knee and given a good spanking? You wouldn't dare. Try me, lady. Carrie Madison. Yes, I recognize you, Miss Madison, and I'm enchanted. Where'd you come in, please? I dare say you're wondering why I, a serious dimensional physicist, should waste my valuable time 
on a television program which sensationalizes science. Well, at least you're brutally frank about it. I don't mean to be rude. But your program is precisely what I need to make those fools in the halls of science take my work seriously. Oh, sorry, I... I've become angry and I've become a very bad host. Can I get you something? No, thanks. Look, I'm sorry, but my camera crew have been delayed. Um, maybe you could go over exactly what it is you want us to film. Is this it? Uh, please, Miss Madison. The matter transmitter is a finely calibrated instrument. And you say you can send things through this machine into another dimension? Precisely. Perhaps if I were to show you what I mean. Shit! Oh. They said it was going to be a nice day. And now? In case you think there's some kind of magician, an object, some personal possession, if I may. I saw it, but I still don't believe it. The objects are still there, but in another dimension. Another part of the universe we cannot see. I don't understand this. <laughs> Are you sure this is safe with all these tremors going on? Be quiet. Look. Fascinating. Do you realize we are looking at a parallel world? Another dimension for the first time. You mean a world like ours? Why not? People are people wherever they exist. Perhaps technologies differ. Why can't you realize what this means? The ability to cross into another world. Dr. Hartman. Dr. Hartman? God, not you again. Well, look, it was your own fault creeping around like that. My fault. I come here looking for help and I get mugged. What have I done to you, lady? You wipe out my truck, you cave in my skull, you... Break your bamboo stick. Kendo sword. Sorry. <sighs> I'm Carrie. Carrie Madison. Dan Roebuck. <laughs> I'm thinking I know you from someplace. I do a TV show. The weird and the wacky. Mm -hmm. Now I know you. Hey, that show really is a pile of garbage. But you're good, though you look thinner on the box. What is this place? It belongs to a Dr. Hartman. Where is he? He's gone. 
And I mean he's really gone. What do you mean, really gone? There's no point. I know you won't believe me. Try me. Well, this machine transmits things into another world, another dimension. <clears throat> I told you you wouldn't believe me. Of course I believe you. Please go on. There was this accident. An accident. And he was standing right there. Standing right here. And then all of a sudden he just disappeared. Like that. <laughs> disappeared just like that. <laughs> Somebody doesn't answer me soon. Dr. Hartman, I swear to God, I have an interview later this afternoon. If I miss it because of you, I'm going to be furious. Damn you. Damn you! I must be dreaming this. Or I'm dead. And this is either heaven or hell. Well, heaven it isn't. So it must be hell. Only this doesn't look like Dallas. Dan Roebuck!
slowly back away. Now what? Run like hell! Keep running! They give me a headache. You want a headache? Just hook up. Oh. What's going on? Maybe it's some sort of strange ritual. <laughs> Dan Roebuck grappling iron. I'm going to pitch it up there, and with luck, we'll hook on to something, and then you and I can chinny up the beanstalk. And what if the giant is up there and chops down the beanstalk? What then? those pint-sized midgets committed suicide in installments. Besides, whatever did it could still be up there. Okay, by me. If the wire breaks, I'll have you to break my fall. But if that's the way you no, want... No, 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 no. Um, second thought, I think I will go first. <laughs> Relax, I got you. I am quite able to do this by myself, so if you don't mind, please take your hand off my butt. Thank you. Hey, what are you doing? I'm letting him go. That's what I'm doing. Oh, so all of a sudden you're an expert in this place. Up to now, everything in this world either wants to hunt you or kill you. God knows what he wants to do. I want to thank you. Chief, speaks. He speaks English. No, I speak Vanyan. We can't stay here. The Varns will return. The Varns? He means those pint-sized midgets. What do you think? I think we better get out of here. But he's green.
Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you for helping us. You saved my life. Therefore, I'm in your debt. We have more forest to cross before we're safe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that amber light? How else can you make a fire? Well, where I come from, we use matches. Sort of like um... <laughs> it'll take too long to explain. Not from Vanya, but there is nowhere else except Vanya. Yet you speak Vanyan. I don't understand. I don't understand myself. I see. These pods are full of a kind of gas. Can I have a look at that? Okay, don't pull apart. My debt to you is now paid. Hey, wait. Hey, we need your help to find a guy named Hartman. He's the guy that got us into this mess. He's the only one that can get us out. Plumberry, food for when you travel. Hey, what happened? He said he squared his debt and he was off. Oh, God. Oh, God, what is that? <laughs> Dinner. couldn't possibly have gotten this far. Could he? Before I answer that, answer me one question. Huh. How long had you been here before I found you? Oh, about a, a day. Why? Well, I've been here for at least a week. A week? That doesn't make any sense. I know it doesn't. How long before you followed me into that, that force field or whatever it was? A couple of seconds, I guess. I don't know. It all happened so fast. Well, I hate to tell you this, but the way I figure it, a split second in our world takes a whole lot longer here. An apartment disappeared sometime before we did. He could have been in this world for at least 
Oh, who knows? Maybe a year. A year? Well, you could be anywhere. That's a good place to look for a cookie scientist. Wait. What? I've seen that before. Where? In the lab. When Hartman disappeared, it was behind him. Terrific! You could do with the shame. Sorry. I'm not complaining. such a wildflower lost here in the wilderness. Especially one with hair the color of the sun. No! I didn't get far. really believe that scum like you could take these away from me and replace me as warlord? No one can kill Cleel. No one! I, I beg you. He, he, he threatened me. Oh, so you are less guilty, are you, coward? Very well. Arak? You will be taken to the fortress with us. As for you, hang him now. <laughs> please, I beg you. No, don't kill me, please. Skin of ivory. Hair the color of the sun. Don't touch me. Ah, oh. And she speaks when she should remain silent. What other surprises do you have for me, wildflower? Let her go, you son of a bitch, or I'll kill you. I'll break your goddamn neck if you don't give me some answers. If we're talking about the girl, Cleo the warlord took her. Where's he taking her? Uh, don't you know anything? Uh, to his fortress in the Dead Mountains. But no one gets in there. And I know what I'm talking about. And who the hell are you? My name's Malachi. Can I get up now? Take 
take me there? First you act like a corpse. Now you want to be an idiot. I wouldn't expect you to do it for nothing. What is that? Is it gold? It's watch. Not only gold, but it's got magical powers. It speaks. Warns the one who wears it that the thief is about. The devil it does. It also tells you Pacific time, mountain time, and the exact hour and minute in Hong Kong. By all that's smelly in my old shoe. <laughs> it's a deal. It's yours. Once we reach Cleo's fortress. First off, you'll need a horse. Talking of horses, the best dealer in these mountains is my old friend Treat. Though you ought to know, he's got the sort of charm that would make a snake vomit. But he sells good horses. to wear my boots again, vermin. This woman belongs to me, do you understand? I didn't know, I swear, I didn't know! Now you do. touched you, the skin would have been peeled from his screaming flesh, because you would have been tainted by his foul embrace, I'd have crushed the petals of my little wildflower. from where we pick up the horses. Oh, about a day's ride. But the closer we get to Cleel's stronghold, the more your mind might change. Why? If the tales they tell are true, Cleel has a mighty sorcerer in his power. You felt the bite of his devil's smoke stick. How can you hope to beat a man who has the dark powers on his side?
Leave the talking to me. Telling my companion how he had to stop and wish my old friend to eat a very merry day. I'll give you that horse manure, you curdled toad. Curdled toad? It's that horse manure, you old horse thief. Handmade tools, the like of which you'll never see again. A horse, my friend, and food and drink is all I ask in return. Just giving away my livelihood. That's gratitude for you. I bring you all this way, introduce you to my friends. Him? And all I'm getting for my pains is the promise of that watch, which would be much safer in my keeping, knowing the type of thief that drinks in this place. Do you hear me? What is it? That uh, man at the table over there. That's a green man. They're really weird. The men with him are traders. They're trying to learn how he summons the wild horses. That's why they're filling them up with booze, but he won't tell them. Where are you off to now? Ah, uh, excuse me. Hi. Pour him another drink. Uh, I can still do with your help. What's going on? Now, listen, friend. We're willing to pay for your secret. Look, uh, the girl I was with, she's in deep trouble. Well, listen, Scathead, you're in trouble. I'm doing business with this man. Now you stay out of it. Look, I only want to put work, okay? Just what do you think you're doing? Look, he helped me before. I'd like his help again, okay? I'm helping you this time, and nobody gets to share my reward. The way you do business, I can't afford you. Backsliding an old deal, is it? Friend, I hope your skull's as thick as your hide. What are you feeding him? I'm getting upset. And when I get uh, upset... Shut up! I told you not to intrude! Oh, hey, oh, hey, I'm sorry. I'm out of line. I hate people who interfere. Look, you ought to know that my friend here not only said you look like hogs in heat, but you smell like pigs in the swill bin. He did, did he? <laughs> for that one. Why? Well, oh, that's for me to know and you to find out. All I ask is the gold band he wears around his wrist. Fool, if Warlord Cleo will pay gold for that one, so will the Nabu Fire Warriors, and they're a lot nearer. <laughs> a favorite treat, old friend. Oh, anything. 
as long as you ride as far from here as possible. A shortcut? Is there a shortcut through to the main trail? Keep the river on your right. Now go. Oh, you evil-smelling shrimp. May you suffocate in your own fat, you tub of grease. <laughs> Raise the gate! Always the little mother. My lord. Bosk, bring the woman. Carefully. A hellcat might damage your manhood again. And don't dismiss the men. I want them to see what happens to those who plot against me. Hair, the color of the sun. What would you give to have hair the color of the sun, Cherie? You'd have the scalp off your pretty head. Venturine would sell her soul to be anything other than the half-breed slave that she is. Isn't that true, Shireen? I hope the hanging of your accomplice weighs heavily on your conscience. You wanted me dead. Now you have the means in front of you to do it, coward. Right here in the open. For everybody to see that Cleo's law is just. Hard, but just. <laughs> You still have the guts, coward. Or is that yellow streak down your back just for decoration? Cleo 
Elizabeth's law is hard. Hard, but just. You call that justice? I call it murder. Perhaps a few hours in Vosk's degenerate arms might teach you a little respect. I don't think you'd like that. Oh? Vosk? Cager. No food, no water. She has the mark of evil in her eyes, Lord. She will bring you ill luck if she stays. No, my dear. If she stays, the ill luck will be yours. <laughs> Great trade. Drunken green weirdo for an undersized thief. Peter. You. I thought I got rid of you. Hope springs eternal. And not only a thief, but an assassin as well. It isn't as bad as it looks. No, you can explain why you're sneaking up on me with a dagger in your hand. I came to warn you. <laughs> right. I did. And this is all the thanks I get. I don't believe this. I just don't believe this. I don't suppose you'd believe me if I tell you there's someone behind you. Oh, come on. <laughs> Just don't ask. We're being sold to the Nabu, who worship that rock of fire over there. We're in great danger. Keep your opinions to yourself, you drunk. Well, my friend, it's your lucky day. The Nabu honor you. They invite you to a contest with the Guardian of the Rock. If you win, you and your friends are free to go. No problem. Start the contest. Hey, hold on a goddamn minute. What the hell am I getting myself into? And if you refuse their invitation, they pull out your tongues by the roots, boil them, and then while you watch, eat them. Oh, that's disgusting. And finally, you're given to the god of the rock. <laughs> and then you fry. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? You never learn, do you? What do I tell them? Do you accept? Nod your head, you idiot. Ah, shoot. <laughs> he desires the contest! Thanks a lot, you little twit. Oh. 
The slaves are not getting sufficient chemicals out of the mind for me to purify and distill. Get me enough and I'll show you what real power is. Then we will drive them night and day. But sorcerer, do not disappoint me. I tire of waiting. Boss! Say nothing, I beg of you. I'll find a way to see you. Drive the slaves even harder. The work goes too slow. And bring the woman in. You may eat. Eat, damn you. Come. You see, I'm not the uh, barbarian you think I am. Plenty of fine food, bath, and uh, look, a frock of exquisite thread. The water cools. Bathe now. What do you take me for? Why do you defy me? Do you enjoy making me angry? Because only the very stupid have no fear. I am afraid. Oh. Well, then why fight me? I mean, you're very strange. Unlike any in this land. But, but you're the first woman who could rule by my side. Go to hell. Do not offend me. Your life hangs by a thread. I could take you any time I wish. You understand? You will stay in the cage without any food or water until you crawl to me on your hands and knees. Beg me to take you. But he won. It isn't fair. True, maggot. But then the rules can change. You win some, you lose some. What can honest men do? What's going to happen now? Oh, that I can tell you. You're going to endure the pit of flame. <laughs> Once this stone plug is removed, the sacred liquid runs down this channel and... Uh, ...is set on fire by the rock. Back it comes and poof, we go up in smoke. What? We're sitting in a bath of oil. So when does the entertainment begin? Now! <laughs> Those pots, how many do they have left? <laughs> Quick. Seconds with Malachi.
Wonderful guy. <coughs> the green man can talk to anything. His name is Kahar. Your woman saved his life some sons ago. You mean Kerry? I told him that you were her friend. He will go with us. I wouldn't think of going without him. The only trouble is we don't have horses. The sun is still high, Shireen. Time enough to burn out your jealousy and pride. You should have chosen me, half-breed. But before the day is done, you'll have the answer to the riddle of this death pit. Why is it that when we leave our dead slaves here, they're all gone by the morning? You will be the only one who knows what happens when night falls. I mean, you really can't do that? We'll soon find out. You know, I never really believed it till now. It saddens me to find you this way, Miss Madison. Well, get me out of here, then. Impossible. Cleel is not the kind of man to cross lightly. You've no doubt already encountered a particular brand of megalomania. But how did you get here? That damn machine of yours. How else? I came through about a second after Dan. Dan? Who's Dan? A friend. A friend Cleel murdered. I'm... I'm sorry to hear that. Then that means that the matter transmitter is still functioning. Then there is a way back. What are you doing here? With Cleo? Survival. This is a strange and violent land. Cleo almost had me slaving away in his mind, but with a few scientific tricks, I persuaded him I was a sorcerer. You've possibly seen the pistols. You son of a bitch. Then it was your guns that killed Dan. No. Cleel murdered your friend. And that lets you off, huh? So you can go and make more guns for them? Cleel is not a fool. So long as he is the only possessor of guns, who can stand against him? But he's also wise enough to know I can give him an even greater power. What have you done, Hartman? You must understand I've had to work with very primitive means at my disposal. Even so... I managed to create a, a primitive but very potent equivalent to nitroglycerine. You're a goddamn maniac. Disappoint me. I would have thought you'd been far more realistic. Do as I have done. Humor him and survive. Cleel will rule this land with the power I can give him. Let Cleel rule, and the rest can go spit. I said it to him, and I'll say it to you. Go to hell.
What's wrong? He says he needs water. Water? Where? Over there, in the trees. What do you see? There is something moving. He senses something evil, unclean. Is that all? I thought it was something serious. Where the hell are we? We're lost. I know we're lost. These caves go under Cleo's fortress.
Thanks, man. Your Excellency. What? If I may, the liquid is still in a highly volatile state. I swear I'd understand you better if you didn't have a tongue. Forgive me, Your Excellency. Perhaps if I were to show you what I've already created. Hmm. Have it, sorcerer. What is it? Clean air. This way. There's a boulder. Kahar! Push! 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 Where'd the big guy go? Who knows? We'll never get in. Look!
nothing we can do. We must find your woman. Yes, but where? I will show you the way. <laughs> yeah. of me, huh? Nobody can be in our woman. Nobody. We're about to suffer fate worse than death. We cannot stay here. Come. Yeah. Wait, Dan. Artman is here. He's Cleo's sorcerer. He's what? He's he's made nitro. If Cleo gets his hands on it. Where is he? I'll take you there. God, how did you get here? I don't understand. Who are these people? There's no time for question and answer games. Carrie, tie him up. And Hartman, any noise, and I'll use this. I wish you'd both listen to me. <laughs> Only a powerful ruler such as Cleo can provide the means to return to our own time. Can't you see that? No, and I don't intend to use Cleo for anything. No, stop! There's enough combustible material here to, to blow us all sky high. What's going on? Is he bring some kind of magic? Where's all the nitro? It's not here. You're lying, but I don't have the time to beat it out of you. So get your miserable hide out of here. Move it! I think you girls will give us any trouble. Life was already finished. Bastard! I must have missed you before. Ah, uh, hold it! No! Even me. That's better. Begging your excellency's pardon, I'm just a humble thief who'd like to make a deal. I don't make bargains. Ah, uh, but this is just a little deal. Oh, look, for pity's sake, just take it easy with that thing. Safe passage out of here. And a little something for my trouble. Now, that's not too much to ask, is it? For God's sake, quit while you're ahead. We'll just take the safe passage. What makes you think I'd let you all out of here alive? Okay, just me, then. You little louse. And if I refuse? I let the magic out of the bottle, don't I? Then you'd simply be pouring away a decent flask of wine. 
Why? I'm afraid so. I seem to recognize the flask you're holding. She told me it was the magic potion. Wine. It seemed like a really good idea at the time. I was going to get help and come back for you. I swear it. Cut out my heart if I tell a lie. Don't tempt me. say to you. Well, I have something to say to you, and you better listen. I'll blow the whistle on you, Arvin. You can't blackmail me. Oh, but you forget. He listens to me now. How else would I have been able to save Dan and the others? The stories I could tell would curl your toes. Now, just what do you think he'd do if he thought you were plotting his death with your powers and potions? Damn you. What do you want me to do? What do you want? Believe it or not, I'm here to help you. What are you taking for, Harbin? You may not know it, but it was I who persuaded Cleo to spare your lives. I cannot have your deaths on my conscience. I find that just a little hard to believe. I have no time to persuade you now. But you must give me your word that if I set you free, all of you will leave this place immediately. Yes, he gives his word. Where's Carrie? She's decided to stay. You're lying. Who knows what goes on in a woman's mind? With all men of the world, these things happen. Now, do I have your word? If you can't think for yourself, think of your friends. Yes, think of your friends. All right. All right, you got it. You, you gave me your word. This world has taught me one thing, Harmon. Trust no one. And you and I are the one finished business. Take care of it. Trip. Leave us, leave us. I don't want to be disturbed. Damn you. You and I have an agreement. Don't forget your friends are still in my power. I gave you their lives in return for your... cooperation. Open it, please. very beautiful. Yes, isn't it? <laughs> it was the lucky charm of a warrior, chieftain. He still believed that it would save his life, even as I pushed my sword between his ribs. <laughs> you have a way of ruining everything. So I ruin everything, do I? Do not patronize me. I've offered you more than I've offered any woman. And you spit in my face as if I was a beggar. You will be careful how you handle those flasks. One slip, and there's enough nitro to store beneath the mountain to blow the entire fortress sky high. There comes a time when you have to live dangerously. You know what to do. Malachi? Yeah. How do you make for pills of guns? I need it. Now. Gotta move while it's still dark. 
I'll lay enough fuse to make this place blowing about. Malachi, give me back my watch. <sighs> Take him with you. I told you I didn't want to be disturbed. Please, I'd like some more wine. Very well. Quickly. I said, drop it. I'm warning you. You take one more step and I'll blow your goddamn head off. You conceited bastard! Ah! That's torn it. Where 
Stand ready. is harsh. I need the gun. Here, I can't try. <laughs> about that invisible doorway, Doc? It's hopeless. Don't you understand? The chances of finding the things I transmitted are 10 million to one. Well, then I suggest we start looking. Gold! What have you found? Just some cast-up bauble with strange markings on it. Markings? Scribbling. How do I know? I can't read. Thank you. That's it! God damn it! That's it! Where'd you find this? No! No, wait! Where have they gone? What about the war?
Hi, this is Sharon K. Griffin, and I am here with Exclusive Entertainment and LaShawn White, whom I want to call pastor for whatever reason it keeps coming to me. But he's doing some extra, extraordinary things in the Columbia, South started, Carolina area. Um, back in Parks and Recreation in 1996. And I served in Parks and Recreation, you know, serving the youth in the community um, where inner city youth are, are often overlooked. Um, you know, uh, the opportunities that they have are limited and uh, just provide that mentorship and that guidance, um, you know, from you know, perspective of one uh, positive uh, male role model. Are the parents model. really um, participating? Um, just tell me more about that because you do serve at-risk youth, correct? Right. That's correct. Well, I guess the thing is we have a number of parents that, you know, that do do their part, but then we have a ton that, uh, that, that you know, we um, would consider to be uh, absent or not play as significant role that as, as we would like surely um, but of course um, you know the fact that you know they allow their kids to um, take part with us and participate in our programs um, you know within itself so how uh, do you, know, you balance the parents that participate and the parents that don't participate because I know that it could be challenging um, on the I don't want to say community but the program overall so could you expound on that sure um, I guess uh, you know our model has been and we encourage our parents you know from a standpoint of we know that you know we have a third of the folks that pretty much do all of the work um, and our parents buy into that system and you know therefore that helps you know to catapult everything and move move everything forward uh, you know, it's, it's, it's often a struggle, um, you know, uh, from a financial standpoint. Um, a lot of the parents, you know, have, you know, different challenges, you know, from uh, not being able, not having adequate transportation or no transportation at all. Um, you know, a lot of the uh, kids, you know, we pick up, we transport, we provide transportation. Um, you know, uh, our parents, you know, chip in and, um, you know, tra help provide transportation. We actually, uh, you know, we had um, a van donated, uh, you know, a while back, um, you know, which, you know, it was enough to get us, you know, around the city to get the kids back and forth to practice, you know, things of that nature. Um, you know, we're doing that era. I think we actually probably picked up maybe 20, probably about 20 kids, you know, for football practices and things of that nature. Wow, so are you a 501c3 nonprofit organization where you can accept donations and people can actually write that off on their taxes? Yes, we are. Um, we actually have uh, our 501c3 is listed under the Pop Warner um, organization, um, Midlands Pop Warner. Uh, we also have um, AAU uh, certification, you know, where we also have the 501 under the AAU um, branch. But we have, you know, we serve. Uh, different, a variation of sports, you know, so, um, you know, we definitely use that as a uh, tool. Okay, cool thing. Now, tell me what your, uh, your, your gifts and your talent is. Like, what do you do um, as far as the organization is concerned? Is it basketball? Is it football? What is it? Well, I do it all. I do, um, you know, I, I fill in, um, I guess, uh, basketball is probably um, the sport that I'm most passionate about, um, the, the sport that I actually have, have studied the most, the, the sport that I have participated in and played the most. Um, I've also played football in, you know, in high school. Uh, but um, we, we also provide baseball, uh, we provide um, soccer, which is the entry sport. You know, we start them as little, as young as one years old. Um, you know, with soccer, one and a half or so. Um, all of my kids started around that age, um, so you know, we, we do it all wherever I need to be. That's so, where I am. So, since you do it all, I, I have to ask this. I love the soccer and I love the baseball. Of course, I love football and basketball. Um, but do you also have golf? <laughs> well, um, we don't have golf. Uh, that, well, I don't instruct golf, but um, I do have um, kids that have participated in golf. Um, you know, we do encourage them to, you know, participate in golf, participate in tennis. Um, you know, I actually try to diversify and, you know, and spread them out a little bit, but that's not a, something that, you know, we put 
we're hands on per se, but uh, you know we do have the golf center, you know, with, through the city of Columbia that uh, you know we all we often you know when the opportunity presents itself, we often encourage the kids to um, participate in, in the golf. And this past fall, my uh, my 17-year-old daughter, you know, she participated in the, in the golf program. So, you know, that was her first time actually participating in golf, and she enjoyed it. You know, I love diversity. Um, and the reason I love diversity is because oftentimes when we look at black people or black folk, urban areas, that we concentrate solely on basketball or football and maybe now some baseball but I love to see when our kids are more diverse to where they can compete with other nationalities especially on the higher level so I commend you all for that and congratulations to your daughter you. um, for participating so you have to tell me what started you to be so passionate about young people and, and wanting to and I must say see them heal um, because anytime you have a calling on your life of course you want to see other people heal so expound uh, why well I guess uh I think, as I mentioned earlier, um, back in '96, when I when I first started um, with the City of Columbia with the Parks and Recreation Program, um, I had the opportunity to actually, um, uh, I guess, um, uh, coach and mentor uh, youth or, or, or guys that was really my age. You know, we may have been you know two or three years apart. Um, I coach under um, Frank Streeter, um, who uh, has been a mentor of mine. Um, as well as, you know, several other guys, you know, uh, Yancey King, you know, all of these guys that now, you know, are, are retired or close to retirement. And, you know, these guys, you know, paved the way and, you know, they, they kind of passed the torch on and, you know, and, and I guess, you know, I grabbed hold of it and, you know, hey, and, and you know, decided to run with it. Uh, a lot of the things that, um, you know, that I learned from them, a lot of the passion that I developed over the years, um, you know, through, whether or not it was through uh, my experiences through um, working with uh, Department of Social Services, working with uh, the Fatherhood Program, um, uh, Department of Juvenile Justice, or Department of Corrections. Um, you know, um, I took a few years off and you know came back um, to the Parks and Recreation because I figured that you know that would be the uh, an opportunity to impact the youth um, before they got to that side, before they got to Department of Corrections, before they got to Department of Juvenile Justice. Lord, I pray that I don't go astray from the way that I was called to be. I'm God's child, but they call me. I know these devils know my name. Because they keep tempting me, presenting me the Hall of Fame and all the game that comes with the whole nine yards. They got contracts, straps and bodyguards, big cars, big bottles, whatever they got them say. I signed by the X. There's only two eyes. I doubt one is gone. But what's really going on is a trip. Still in the thick, caught up in all kinds of numbers. Hoping that tomorrow I'll rise. Smoking and laughing and joking and trying to hide it. All the love that's lost on the other side. Today another mother cried. Another brother died. Another victim of genocide. And he saved me. From all the sin inside my own. And God said, I saved you to be a messenger for me. Took you to hell and back so you could tell the story. So shake them haters off and keep stepping. So, Zay, you think they're ready for the next level? My mind's about to explode. I can't hold the load no longer. This next episode's coming stronger. Now how am I wrong to bomb the devil's shelter? Make sure the devil felt the wrath as everything in my path burns and melts. My mental Messiah be taking me high. I watch the angels set the world on fire. I escape and escalate. My mental state set on a phase above. I drop lyrics smooth as wings of a dove. I got love for the other side. Because I know when I go, the streets will be paid with gold. But every show they flow at, know that these other poets try to blow that like tops off the moat. They scream, where I know at? Although that, 
Money can make a man and lose control and sell his soul. I'm God's child, it ain't the way we roll. Oh no. <laughs> Is that the way we roll, Zay? No. That ain't the way we roll. So prepare for the next level. I've been stripped of my grave clothes by the same one who saved those in days old. Now I just lay low, I'm no longer a rebel, I'm blessed. And this is the next level. Y'all have a blessed night.